Good morning and welcome to our service here at Abernathy United. So today we'll just continue in our overall direction of our current series. And in this current series, we're, uh, we're encouraging the body to get into the Word of God. So here at Abernathy United, one of our core values is word saturated. And so you cannot be word saturated if you do not get into the Word of God. And so part of this series is just... A, like I said, just stirring up God's people to get him to his beautiful, infallible word and just to discover who he is. And so with that said, let's jump right into our sermon today. So the title of our sermon is Overcoming All Odds. And the reason I put that there, the story that we'll be reading today is found in Genesis 37 through 50. So this story is about a, a, a guy uh, where at this point, point in his life when it all begins he's a young guy he's about 17 years old and it's about Joseph uh, the son of Jacob and so I, I believe that this story is really relatable because I know church that many times that we've we've been under persecution just like Joseph Joseph in this story we're going to see uh, jealousy we're gonna see betrayal we're gonna see his vindication we're gonna see victory and we're gonna see true forgiveness uh, and so I believe we've all been there sometime in our lives uh, I, I feel that I can safely assume or say that somewhere in our life as a child we were abused maybe physically mentally emotionally spiritually and maybe even sexually I believe we've all suffered some kind of persecution or perhaps today you have uh, are you right in the midst of uh, be, being betrayed and abandoned by your spouse, or maybe the day you, you're going and suffering under false accusations of being falsely accused of something you didn't do, you're innocent, uh, and you there's been injustice there, and maybe that describes you, or maybe. Uh, you were denied a promise by your, your spouse or your friend or your job and, 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 and they didn't come through with it. Or maybe when, when you were young, like I said earlier, maybe you were lured in your innocence to trust the untrustworthy. Or maybe somewhere down the line you've been deceived into committing or committing uh, something that was wrong. Either way, I believe that all of us this morning can testify or share a moment in our lives that we have suffered just like Joseph. So, as I said, in, in this story right here, I just want to give you a little background here. Joseph uh, not only suffered jealousy and betrayal, but this jealousy and betrayal were by those uh, that were closest uh, and dearest to his heart. I mean, many of you might be there at this moment, you know, and, and, and the thing that is sad, church, because it seems like those that love us the most at times are the ones that hurt us the most. Uh, but we can relate. It's relatable to our lives and also what transpires in this story about Joseph. So in this story, Joseph is a young man. He's the youngest man at that time uh, to Jacob. Uh, but the thing about Joseph is that the, his dad's favor over his life was so tremendous that the other, his other brothers noticed it and then made them angry, made, it, made them hate, hate him, and they eventually drove them uh, to jealousy and betrayal of Joseph. So at a young age, they, they seen this favor over Joseph. Uh, they they seen it one day even more as the dad had uh, woven together a, a, a robe or a tunic of many colors for Joseph. And so this actually escalated their anger, their jealousy, their hatred for Joseph. So the story goes, they're out, they're attending the flock. And uh, so his brothers are a good ways away from home. And so J uh, Jacob sends uh, Joseph to check on his brothers. It was a bad decision right off the bat because they were already angry with him. And the reason they were angry with him, not only because of the favor of their dad, but he had interpreted some dreams that he had that they were all going to eventually bow down to him. So uh, you can just imagine in their hearts and their minds the thought of their younger brother being over them. So 
He comes out to meet them to check on them. So they seize the moment and they take advantage of it. So there's a point that they're, they're so angry and so uh, jealous uh, and they hated uh, Joseph so much they, they, they even thought about killing him. But one of the brother intervenes and says, hey, we can't kill our own brother. Let's not spill any blood here. So if you, if you read the story, they end up selling him off at the young age of 17. But it's pretty neat there who they sell him to. So there's uh, some Median, Media night, Medianites and, and then the Ishmaelites, and they end up selling him to the Ishmaelites. But if you go back in history, there's some awesome things. I don't want to get off on a rabbit trail. Some awesome things there because in the end, the Ishmaelites are actually his family because uh, Abraham had two sons, Isaac and Ishmael. So if you remember, one was the, the son of promise, one of the flesh. And here he's being sold off to the Ishmaelites. So Ishmaelites take him. Here's the journey of Joseph begins. He's then sold off into the household of Pharaoh. He ends up uh, falling under a man named Potiphar. And Potiphar uh, right away recognized something different about Joseph. He realized quickly that the favor and the presence of God was with Joseph. And because of that, right away, uh, uh, Joseph is put under his wing. And he pretty much uh, is like overnight put into this high ranking position under Potiphar. Everything's going well until Potiphar's, uh, Potiphar's wife notices Joseph that he's a pretty good looking guy. She comes on to him. Joseph's like, no, I can't do this to my God. And so she falsely accuses him and he ends up in prison. But the awesome thing there again, uh, God was with Joseph all the time. His favor was over Joseph. Uh, his presence was with Joseph and the warden sees it. Warden also promotes him to a high position. So in this story, while he's in there, Two men are sent by Pharaoh there, the, the wine bearer, uh, the wine cup bearer, and the, the head baker. They're there. They both have dreams. Joseph interprets says, one of you is going to serve Pharaoh again. The other one, your, your life is going to be taken. But in the midst of that, uh, he tells uh, the, the cup bearer, hey, when you get out there, uh, tell Pharaoh to remember me. Now, if you remember, two years pass before anything's done. The story goes on to say that um, Pharaoh's taken, uh, Pharaoh uh, gets Joseph, Joseph interprets the dreams, and Pharaoh makes him his right hand man. But there's a lot of things that we can learn from this story. So, in this, we're going to see that God allowed Joseph to go through all these things, which uh, led Joseph to victory, his vindication his prominent position, God's favor, and eventually he was able to forgive those who had betrayed him. And so today I, I want to ask you all a question. Could you do the same? I, I, I asked myself this question, and I kind of wrestled this, this question here. And, and another question was, how was he able to overcome such opposition? And uh, uh before we get to the how, I just want, I, I just feel like the Lord gave me a few things in this message for us to really chew on and just think about. And so one of the first things before we jump into the sermon today is, is um, as this message develops, uh, I feel that there's some real, there's a lot of threads that are really re relevant and uh, applicable to our lives here. So in this sermon, we'll see that Joseph was at the exact place that God ordained him to be. But also in the midst of that, Joseph began to understand that he had had God's unearned and undeserved forgiveness was over his life. And, uh, and, and, and I believe this portion also pertains to us because God forgave us even though we didn't deserve it. For those of you who have received Christ in faith, uh, you have been forgiven, right? And, and so the amazing part is Joseph realized that he had undeserved uh, and unearned forgiveness from God. And Romans 5, 8 
says it so beautifully. He says, but God shows his love for us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The second thing that, that uh, is under, uh, understanding here, that Joseph became a great steward of forgiveness. What do I mean by that? Even though God calls us to forgive, right? Because in reality, because Christ forgave us, we don't really have the right to be unforgiving. Um, I believe that we need to be good stewards of forgiveness. So even though God calls us to forgive, I feel that in our forgiveness, there has to be wisdom. I don't want that to be confused with conditions, but I believe that we have to have wisdom in our forgiveness. And this is what I mean. Wisdom is, is, is being thoughtful about how to forgive those that have hurt us. And let me elaborate that, on that a little more. Uh, we must uh, maintain wise decision decisions about how to have healthy boundaries in our forgiveness with the people who have not yet been transformed by Christ uh, because they're, they're not at a point that they are no longer hurting people. Even though you forgave them, some of them remain hurting people. So I believe that we need to be really wise on how we give that forgiveness and how we steward that forgiveness. And, and uh, I believe it's okay to forgive, but I wouldn't put, for example, if you were, you were abused as a kid, I wouldn't put my kids in the arms or, or around that person that hurt me uh, until that forgiveness has been stewarded well and that person uh, can be trusted again. And uh, I am a firm believer in second chances because God has given us second chances as well. So th the way Joseph did that, true forgiveness wasn't given until he tested his brothers to see if they had truly repented and turned away from their wicked ways. So with that said, let's jump right into the sermon. So here are a couple of ways how Joseph was able to overcome these things in his life. So Joseph remained faithful and confident in God and his favor. God was with Joseph everywhere he went. Joseph was, uh, he, he not only lived, but he spoke in a way that reflected his faith in God. And because of this, the reward, uh, God, uh, because of this, God granted him favor everywhere he went. Uh, we see that right away in Potiphar. We see that right away in the warden. Uh, but Potiphar recognized Joseph's success and that it was God's given. And if you get a chance, you can read this in Genesis 39 verse 3. So instead of using the hardship in his life as an excuse to abandon God or feel sorry for himself, he responded with integrity. And I think that's tough, church, because I know myself, I can testify, not every time can I respond with integrity. And so we, we see this really played out in the time when he is falsely accused by Potiphar's wife. And this is how he rebuffed her. And I want you to pay attention here. And this is found in Genesis 39, 9. But he responds in this way. As the woman is coming against him, he responds in a tremendous way. He says, how can I do such a wicked thing and sin against God. He's saying, hey, I realize that God's favor, his blessings over my life, and you want me to betray that God? No, I don't think so. If you know the story, he ends up in jail because of this. So Joseph was never ashamed to make his faith and trust in God known. You can find that in Genesis 40, uh, verse 8, and Genesis 41, verse 16. So the second thing here is Joseph served faithfully no matter his conditions. This to me is hard, church. I think we all struggle with this because uh, we want to serve in the great moments, but when the times of testing or tribulation or those, those things that are not great, that's where we have a problem. So instead of falling victim to circumstance and injustice, Joseph overcame through God, and you can do this as well. These things never, no matter what happened, these things never poisoned his heart's attitude toward God. Joseph continued, no matter what was happening, 
uh, he continued to serve Potiphar and the warden faithfully. And and uh, sometimes I still try uh, trying to grab, uh, grasp my mind around this, but it had to be hard. Both, but when he did, both immediately uh, promoted him to their most trusted positions. And so working for God in the lowest positions, uh, what did that do for Joseph? Well, it did several things. It developed his character uh, as well as uh, administrative and leadership skills that he would later need when Pharaoh made him his right hand. So in essence, even though he was going through all this suffering, this betrayal, this jealousy, false accusation, God was building him up for the future of what God had planned for him, which eventually meant for God's glory, but Joseph's good, right? So and here's the third how. Joseph was able to overcome because he embraced God's blessings in the midst of the gauntlets of his suffering, right? So he was suffering, he was going through all these things. Joseph always, the key was that he was always faithful. He was faithful to God and he always knew that God's uh, presence was with them and that God was blessing them even in the midst of slavery. And th this thought I wanted to share, and I pray that you're paying attention this morning to this uh, portion here, because uh, I believe the Holy Spirit gave me this. I've realized, church, that prison doesn't have to be a physical place. It can be mental, it can be emotional, and it can be spiritual. But as Scripture says, whom the set Son has set free is free indeed. So I realize this, no matter the situation, when given freedom by God, you can remain free in any state. Yet on the other side of the spectrum, some of us have been set, from, uh, set free but remain in prison. And what do I mean by that? I believe, as I said, whoever he set free, you're free. But I believe that freedom requires an action. For example, Jesus then opened the cell for you to be free, you have to act in faith and actually step out into that freedom. So I also believe some of us don't realize that we are in prison. Does that make sense? That sometimes we, we think we're free, but we're really in prison. While others make things, uh, uh, we, we make prisons out of other things uh, and don't realize that we're actually being blessed in those situations, kind of like Joseph's situation. Some of us might uh, feel like that about our marriage, that maybe we feel imprisoned, but actually marriage is a beautiful institute of God. Uh, and it's, it is it's part of your identity. It's part of who you are in Christ. It's not something you do. So I would like to just share this to encourage you. You are exactly where God has placed you to be by his divine plan. Amen. So when Joseph was released and promoted, his first praise was to God. I don't know about you, uh, church, but that is something in my growth with God that, that I've matured in, that most of my prayers and most of the things in my life are being grateful and thankful, first and foremost for my salvation, but just how God works in and out, in, in and, and through my entire life. Amen. So first thing that Joseph did was praise God, and he says this, God made me forget my troubles and my father's household, and he made me fruitful in the land of suffering. Whoa, what a beautiful thing. You can find that in Genesis 41, 51 and 52. He didn't deny his trials, his suffering, his difficulties, but he actually embraced them with confident expectation that God the Deliverer would grant him freedom, favor, and blessings. What a beautiful thing. So three ways that God's favor helped Joseph through betrayal, jealousy, and being wrong is one of the greatest parts of this story. Uh, God was able to strengthen Joseph uh, to restore his relationship, right the wrongs, and grant him true forgiveness. So here are a few things that I just feel that I need to mention in this sermon is Joseph um, broken relationship God restored. So those three things, right? Uh, he restored his relationship. We're going to look over that. He, uh, God right, right, rights his wrongs, and then he grants 
true forgiveness. So the first one is that Joseph's broken relationships were restored. So two, de two decades after his betrayal, Joseph is confronted with those who had wronged him. And uh, so an opportunity presents himself to get even, uh, to be vengeful, right? But uh, praise the Lord that he left it in God's hand. And so uh, yet Joseph's response was uh, to test their hearts and to see if there was true change and true repentance. And you read the, as you read the account, you see that Joseph's brother, brothers admitted to their sin against Joseph. Their brothers' uh, uh, change was evident as that they were not jealous of Joseph's favor to Benjamin. Uh, they showed anguish when they seen that the silver cup was in Benjamin's bag. Uh, they didn't gloat over it. And then you see that there was true repentance because even Jude, uh, Judah decides, hey, I I'll take my brother's place. And so satisfied by their transformation, Joseph reveals himself, uh, restoring their previous relationship. And, and then on top of that, because Joseph's heart had been filled with, with peace and forgiveness, he gives his siblings even greater possessions. The second thing here, God does something amazing. God writes the wrongs uh, towards Joseph. So Joseph understood God's favor and that God never abandoned him. He knew only God, uh, he knew that only God could use jealousy and betrayal for his good, right? Uh, this to me is a true picture of Romans 8, 28, where scripture says he turns all things for our good, you know, and, and they're for God's glory, but really for our good. So this was ingrained in him that when he revealed himself to his brother, he comments, do not be angry with yourselves over what you have done to me. God used it to save lives. This is a picture, this to me right here, this portion right here is a beautiful picture of our Savior Jesus, right? So Joseph's, uh, 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 Joseph's faith in God's divine hand is seen through his sufferings, but it's a picture of Jesus laying down his life for others, amen? And here's the third one. It's the final one and we'll be done. And the last thing was God helped Joseph to give true forgiveness, and to steward that forgiveness well, right? So I believe this is the hardest part of all. Forgiveness is easier said than done. Joseph's faith in God's plan enabled him to fully forgive his brothers. His response is, is, is astounding. And we, we read this in Genesis 50, 19 through 21. And so I want to read this to you this morning. Uh, as, as uh, look at the beautiful forgiveness here, and only God could do this. And so it is found in Genesis 50, verses 19 through 21. And this is what Joseph said. But Joseph said to them, Do not fear, for I am in the place of God. As for you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good to bring about that many, People should be kept alive as they are today. So do not fear. I will provide for you, your little ones. Thus he, he, he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. To me, that part is easier said than done. So church, this morning, I, I, I believe that the greatest portion for me in this entire story is how it points to our Savior, Jesus. And you, you've seen, uh, so, there's so many similarities there, and they're so profound that sometimes, unless they're pointed out to us, uh, we may miss them. So I, I just wanted to read some of these out to you. Jesus was Christ was sent to the cross out of jealousy and betrayal, just like Joseph, right? Uh, uh, jealousy and betrayal of the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and ultimately because of us. <clears throat> Excuse me. Joseph's life was in jeopardy, but his brothers opted to sell him, right, for 20 pieces of silver. It's almost like our Savior. Our Savior was sold 
for 30 pieces of silver, but his life was not pardoned. It was required for all man, man, mankind. Joseph's life was given to save people from famine, just like Jesus laid down his life willingly to save the spiritual hungry. Uh, God favors, uh, God's fa God favored and accompanied Joseph everywhere he went. Yet for us, the, the, the awesome part is that God's wrath was on Jesus and, and he, gave, he gave us that favor. So Joseph was divinely placed in the place where he was able to forgive and overcome. And Jesus' death brings forgiveness to all those who believe him in him. As scripture says, he is faithful and just to forgive all our sins. Jesus was placed by God on the cross for you and me. Forgiveness, church, is easier said than done. We must forgive as we have been forgiven. Uh, and there is, true forgive, uh, there is true freedom in forgiveness. I have come to understand that because I have been saved by grace, mercy, and this love, I've really given up my right to be unforgiven and to allow God to have vengeance. Back in the day, uh, I wanted to be vengeful. I wanted to repay evil for evil. But when Christ came into my life, he changed that mindset, that heart uh, metric. And he said, hey, so, so when I forgave you, you, you've given up the right to be unforgiving because the debt you owed me was a tremendous one. But I chose to forgive and forget it anyways. As scripture says, right, uh, he forgives our sins uh, from the east to the west. He says that in his word that he gets our sins and buries them in the depths of the sea, never to remember them. So which, uh, you know, so he's chosen to pardon us. He's chosen to forgive us. Um, I, I, once, I once heard that a true forgiveness has no conditions. I think that's an amazing thing because praise God for that because as believers, uh, we're under that, right? But I, I heard, a, and I want to quote this beautiful lady uh, of God. And I, I, when I heard this, it was really profound and really beautiful. And it pertains to forgiveness. And she said this. She said that true forgiveness is giving up the right to hurt people for hurting you. And... Uh, Church, I know that many of us have suffered at the hand of people that we thought loved us. Uh, those promises that were broken. All these things. But the awesome thing, church, is that, that as Christ forgave us, we're to be forgiven. Uh, forgiving people as well. I do believe, like I co uh, shared at the very beginning of the sermon, we need to be wise in that forgiveness and stewarding forgiveness. But... At the same time, I believe what forgiveness does, it sets us free uh, from those people that have hurt us. And uh, there's no greater picture than what Christ did. You know, uh, he forgave us. You know, there was a, there was a moment in our lives uh, because of what we've done affected him, right? And he had to go to the cross. And now we can understand what true forgiveness is. So... If anything you heard today uh, blessed your heart or there's things you might want to know more on the study, uh, feel free to reach out to us. You can reach out to us at 806-298-2581, and we'd love to hear that. If there's something in life you need prayer for, we'd love to do that as well. But with that said, uh, God bless you. I pray that the sermon is a blessing to you. Have a great day and a great week. Amen. <music>